Already sitting in the studio is Mr. At, um, uh, Mr. Solomon Ate. Uh, he is um, the, the leader or the promoter of Bantu Voices, one of the leading uh, organizations that uh, actually uh, spotlight the activities of non-governmental organizations. He is equally a Mandela, Mandela Washington a fellow, he was recently, uh, I mean, selected, and definitely anytime soon, he will likely be joining the county of Uncle Sam. Uh, one now to take on to our second newspaper, still the Guardian Post that title this week, I mean, on Tuesday, Bia, where is the appeasement package announced for Garbu a massacre victims? Bia, where is the appeasement package announced for Ngarbu massacre victim? Mr. Ate Solomon, good evening and thanks for joining us. Good evening, Mayor. Permit me to call you Mayor. I always call you that even when we meet out of the studio. Uh, it's a privilege to me to be, for me to be on the studio again. And uh, my apologies to the um, uh, management of our CMTV and to the audience for coming late. I was caught up with some other engagement, but I promise next time I'll... I'll, I'll be early because uh, coming late is a disrespect to the audience that are very faithful to our program and equally to the management of this uh, our noble media house. So I apologize for that and I uh, hope that you're going to bear with me. So uh, let me just react to that newspaper. What caught my attention on that caption was uh, the tag beer. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's daring. Is, is there, especially uh, in our Cameroon context with our fragile democracy, where we know what it means uh, to directly tag the president and ask him such sensitive questions, especially with concerning a conflict that has really paralyzed uh, the public relations of uh, the Cameroon government and, and the military in particular. Uh, Cameroon is noted, uh, President Paul Bia celebrated uh, 38 years of sloganeering. The other day, I, I made sure that I, I quoted that he celebrated 38 years of sloganeering, means that he spent 38 years living on slogans. Living on slogans. Some people say that Cameroon is a land of promise. I, I, I think one of the emblems is it the uh, land, land, land of promise, land of promise. People say that Cameroon is a land of promise, just as the anthem says. But and it's everything. Yeah. Well, the glory part of it is really, really taking time to come. I just hope it's going to come. But somebody has said, uh, glory comes after suffering. Let us see how our suffering will lead to, uh, to, to the glory. But I, I think that we'll spend most of our time on promises, promises. It looks like uh, that part of the anthem was deliberately put on promises uh, to cajole us so that when they give us promises, they don't fulfill after all. They're just promises. So it, it's, really, it's, it's really a sensitive issue where we're living in the heat of a crisis where peacemen measures are really critical at this moment to calm down tensions in the northwest and southwest region. An incident like Ngabu has happened uh, where uh, the military, the government has accepted that its military, so-called professional military, was involved in, in the scene. Uh, it, it was time for us to make an appeasement. We've seen them reacting uh, to the incident in Kumba because the military has not been tagged, because the military has not accepted responsibility, because apparently a responsibility is being shifted to the unknown. And now we see how uh, the military or the government officials are rushing to give them a state barrier in order to make us understand that if it's not them, it is, it is the other camp, then the other camp is demonic. Just to, yeah. further, just to further hear from you, Mr. Ate Solomon, yeah. Uh, the newspaper did not uh, end at personalizing, uh, attacking the personality of uh, the head of state, Mr. Pobia, yes. but they went further to quote some instances. First, the compensation that was announced for the family, yes. but secondly, the penalty, I mean, the disciplinary proceedings that were announced equally for the perpetrator. None of it has been achieved, or better say, uh, the account has not been rendered to the people. Well, I, I think that there's something that says uh, justice that's is slow, is justice denied. Okay. Yeah. People are living in pain after what happened in Gabu. A lot of people want to see justice takes its course. And we are living in a society where uh, they always announce measures, they are going to arrest these perpetrators. At the end of the day, you only hear that they have been announced, but you don't see, hear or don't see how the trials end up. 
that is the country where we are living in. And in a system like this, where things are really deteriorating, I think that justice does not need to be done. Justice has to be seen to be done at this point in order to appease the minds of people, if at all there's an appeasement. Because I, I see uh, the, the cacophony around the Kumba incident. I don't know what government is trying oh, to achieve. Yeah, to the yeah, and then these people are being given a step barrier. Come on, we are in a country where a human life is better than the propaganda. I don't know what government is trying to achieve by just packaging the whole thing and giving these people a step better. These are people's children who went to school to study in order to have a future, but that future has been snatched away from them in favor of a state barrier. This is really an insult to people, and I think that the best thing that should be done for these people is that to render justice and for justice to come in place justice must start with the Ngabo and incident the thing that the insult was further compounded by declaring a saturday for exactly a, 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 state barrier a, a, a saturday for a state barrier i don't uh, for, national for, 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 for national morning day i don't know what that means because if we really want to have a national morning day it shouldn't be a saturday saturday is not a working day for goodness okay sake. after you mr ate uh, mr eswa uh, just to insist and emphasize that you are very closer to the Yaoundé administration and uh, why are we living on promises after 38 years and seven months after the Ngarbu massacre, the government promised to compensate the family and has not uh, given account for that and was still equally promised disciplinary sanction on the perpetrators that were clearly identified and the, the military spokesman came out and attest for the fact that the military were responsible for the uh, uh, Garbu massacre. Yet, seven months after, uh, people, the tears of the family is still pouring and nobody to cut them. Um, Mr. Cyril, when you ask me why are we still living in promises, I don't have the answer to that question. I consider, let me assume the question to be a rhetorical question. Okay. I, I would rather delve into saying that the, I'll stand to agree to the fact that the government has been so slow in reaction. Um, because seven months after the incident of Ngabu, uh, remember when it happened, it's no longer news. Um, the, first of all, the government did not take responsibility. They denied first. And we are saying the same thing. Okay. The government did not take responsibility. But after investigations, it was proven beyond reasonable doubt that that heinous act was carried out by the military. Right. And the, the head of state came out strongly through the Secretary General of the Presidency to outline measures and punishments which were supposed to be meted on the perpetrators of that act. Indeed. And criminal actions, of course, were to be followed suit. Of course, compensation to the families, the befitting barriers, the promise that the cops were going to be, were to be exhumed and given proper barrier. So when all those measures were announced, they were so glorious. I'm sure everybody admired the, the step, which, the steps which were taken by the head of state through the Secretary General, the Presidency, Ferdinand Gongo. But um, it's unfortunate that to date, they have not been implemented. Uh, I'll say it again, one of the major problems we have in this country is implementation. If it's about the decisions, we have fine decisions. We have fine minds to think to come out with resolutions, but we are slow in implementing, which is very dangerous. You see, it's just like the laws. Cameroon has one of the best laws you can think of in Africa, why not the world? But the problem now, the context now, is the implementation of those laws. So I, I think the, the government really has to sit up as far as communication is concerned, because probably they might, they might have reasons why those things have not been done. But if the masses are not informed, educated up as to why those things have not been done, then it's a very, very big problem. Now, I want to disagree a little with the Kumba issue where we talked of the fact that they gave state barrier, they did this, they did this. You see, one of the problems I have with us Cameroonians is that we, we always have reason to complain. Be rest assured, if those ministers did not go there, if the Yaoundé government did not go to Kumba. Six minister council. I don't care whether there were six or ten. Be rest assured, if those ministers did not go there, people would have still complained that a situation like this doesn't mean 
These children did not merit a state barrier after such an incident. Does the government live on... Uh, and what I'm saying countries? is that uh, Cameroonians will always have reason to complain. The incident had already happened. What, has, have, what have they done about the complaint for a call for dialogue? That has been yes. called since four years yes. ago. If truly they were so worried about the complaint, my memory from the people. has not failed me from the 30th of September to the 4th of October 2019, there was a national dialogue in this country. Whether the dialogue pleased everybody or not is none of my business. But okay, the, the so-called dialogue was what you was said organized. You are the one who has called it a so-called dialogue. It's your, I mean, it's the your call from the people. It's your appellation, sir. You are the one who has tempted the so-called dialogue. I don't know how. I mean, the call from the people is what Mr. Bia called on September the 29th. I mean, so what I'm saying here is that tell. what I'm saying here is that there is no way on this earth, whether I would like it or not, that you can please everybody. There is no way you can please but everybody. As the head of state, if, he has a mandate from the people to work for them. And you, uh, we are saying the same thing. If, even in your house, I'm not sure you can please all your children the same. There is no way you can please everybody in this country without criticism. So, in as much as we are saying that the government is faulty on the fact that they have not been communicating, because when this crisis, for instance, permit me go a little backward. When this crisis started in 2016, if the government had been communicating, we will not be where we are today. I want to disagree with you. We will not be where we are today. We'll be back to you, Mr. Ashley. If If the government had been communicating, we will not be where we are today. Remember, this crisis started as a result of professional grievances by lawyers and teachers. All right. When they went to Bamenda, many of us here do not know that the teachers, the core, which I am part of, and knows exactly what happened, because I have the documents, the complaints of the teachers in my house, I would let you know that what transpired in Bamenda, if the government had communicated to the masses, we would not be where we are today. But you are part of the government. You are. I am not part of the government. But you are very close to the Yaoundé administration. That's, I, please, I want you to, I wish to plead that you withdraw that statement that I am very close to the Yaoundé administration. Are you not part of the CPTA? I'm, Are you renouncing your party this when I, The fact that I'm a sympathizer and supporter of the CPDM does not mean I'm close to the government. Those are two different things. Okay, henceforth I will say you are a sympathizer. Yes, I, I prefer that. But we have to understand that the CPDM is okay. the party. I, I think after you, Mr. Uh, Ishwa, I want to bring you back. Solo, do you, do you buy into what um, the sympathizer of CPDM is putting forth? First, let us agree that a sympathizer of the CPDM is a member of the CPDM, and the CPDM is the ruling party that's the party in power. It means that when you're a member of the CPDM, you're a member of the government, whether you like it or not. That is what Cameroon is. We're not saying things that we invented from the air. We see it during elections. We see how people are, are coerced to vote for the ruling party. We see how government officials in this country go down to the field to campaign for the ruling party oh, yeah. using administrative vehicles to go and campaign for the ruling party. Vehicles plus resources to go and campaign for the political for, for the ruling party. What, trans, that, what, what, what does that translate to you? It tells you that as a member of the CPDM, automatically you are a member of the government. There is no discussion. There is no, gentlemen, there, there is no that takes us to the topic of the day. Uh, the first topic of the day, definitely, we are going to talk about um, ahead <laughs> the regional elections and end of year festivity. Minat boss tax governors to stay alert or 